Hello and welcome to another video, uh, this time involving one of our clients, uh, Nick Marsh from uh, Ashley, who's going to tell us about his experience of Curo, a bit about his business um, and plans for the future. So Nick, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. It's an absolute pleasure. And uh, you've come up from? Uh, Cheltenham today, yeah. so not too far. Not too far. And how was the journey? How was the, uh, the A40? Yeah, so it was okay, actually. It can be quite bad, can't it? But it was, uh, yeah, it was just over an hour, so it's not too bad, is it? And you weren't caught on the A34, which is always a, a nightmare as well. Yeah, no, no, it's all good, all good. Excellent. Got lucky, I guess. So tell us about Ashley. So where have you come from, your plans, all that sort of stuff. A bit of background about the business. And also, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, blimey. That's how long have we got, isn't it? As long as you like. So yeah, so Ashley was started in 2005 by Diane Wheats, who many people in the profession will know. Uh, she's actually in the process of retiring uh, at the moment. And so by the end of the year, she should be fully out of the business and... Uh, and management buyouts hopefully will take place, touch wood and all of that, isn't it, with those things. Uh, it's been quite a challenging period because as anyone that's sort of grown a small business will know, it's not the easiest thing uh, to sort of step away from that. So it's been quite a challenge. Uh, I joined the business in 2014 as the second advisor. So I've been there, I guess, just over seven years. Uh, at the moment, which has been great. Um, wasn't an advisor before that, so I come from quite a different world. Spent most of my career uh, on trading floors uh, with okay. Goldman Sachs in different parts of the world, which was uh, quite an adventure and quite different. And I think it's, you know, it does make me quite different or have a different viewpoint to a lot of other advisors in the marketplace. Uh, Ashley itself, we're, we're doing well. Again, it's been quite challenging just in terms of evolving from the business that Diane had built, which had grown quite rapidly, and again, probably more by accident than design, and just making sure that we put the right processes underneath. Uh, team of seven people, uh, around 200 clients. Uh, so relatively small, I would imagine, for your normal client base. But uh, yeah, but yeah, great team. Fantastic. Well, that's fascinating. And, and I suppose, um, We've got to talk about the pandemic and the impact that's had on you. I mean, because clearly you've been, uh, you say, seven years now, but two of those years have been in a very interesting world. How, how did you guys uh, adapt to that? And, and what, are the, what are the results of, or what's come out of it as a result of the pandemic in terms of how you operate and how you operate with your clients? Yeah, I think it was it was particularly interesting for us because not only were we dealing with managing clients and any fears or, you know, they, they had, you know, not just about their investments, but just life in general, wasn't it? It was such a difficult time. But we were also at the same time in the process of transitioning Diane's clients uh, to myself and her daughter, Eleanor, who works with us as well. Uh, so we were transitioning those clients over Zoom, uh, and a lot of them are more elderly. So one, they were dealing with the technology. Diane was dealing with saying goodbye to clients in a difficult society, but over a, a te you know over a screen effectively. Uh, at the same time as well, we'd made the decision to partner with a DIM for our investments as part of evolving our process. So, you know, poor clients were being introduced over uh, technology to a new advisor and a new investment process. So challenging time for us, but I think as a team, we dealt really well. It was quite straightforward for us to relocate staff. Again, seven people, so not, not too challenging from that perspective. So yeah, coped pretty well. But how did the clients respond? Because you mentioned they were quite elderly and obviously moving from an established relationship uh, to something new. How did they sort of respond to that whole process and, and the fact that they couldn't perhaps meet you face to face and have that sort of more traditional handover? Yeah, it, look, it, it, the transition went really well and clients overall, I think we discount actually. Uh, if I say, you know, if I talk about our client base being relatively elderly, uh, over half of our clients are over the age of 70 at the moment. And again, that's changing at the moment or that will evolve. 25% uh, are over the age of 80. Um, wow. Yeah, so we are, you know, we're dealing with people uh, that are heading into later life, let's say. But I think we discount uh, how much people at that stage of life will engage with technology. So I would say we probably, again, out of sort of 200 clients that we were reviewing over that period, uh, we probably had five that wouldn't accept a meeting over, you know, over Zoom or Teams, whatever it was. Uh, so they dealt with it really well. I think the relationship was good because it was so strong with Diane. 
so that they felt comfortable that if Diane was saying, you should trust what the next generation are doing, that they did really. So it's, uh, but we've had some good tests since we've got back into the office. I actually found it quite intimidating to meet clients in the office again. It was a really strange thing. Uh, yeah, and again, I know people have talked a lot about people being anxious talking because you're the focal point of a video. Um, I didn't mind that so much. Um, in fact, it was quite helpful because we were meeting all of these new clients, but we had access to data on another screen if we, as long as we weren't too distracted. Um, but yeah, yeah. But so once we're back in the office now, the clients are, in, um, for the most part, are choosing to come back into the office. Which is nice, I guess. I suppose it's, you know, especially of that sort of age, because I think they like the human interaction. I suppose a lot of time is spent on their own, really. Uh, but I think you're right in terms of the adoption of technology. I, I remember my dad, I mean, he, he died a, uh, a couple of years ago, but, um, you know, he discovered the iPad and his world changed. All of a sudden, you know, he was able to communicate with anybody. And, you know, I suppose families become more distributed nowadays than ever before. And my son's in Melbourne, in Australia. And for my dad to be able to FaceTime him, you know, and just catch up. Phenomenal, and of course they've got the time, haven't they? And uh, and uh, and certainly the motivation. So I think you're right. I think there are a lot of assumptions made by people which uh, have been proven unfounded. So so talking about tech then, uh, technology. Um, uh, tell us about your business, your relationship with technology, your journey to Curo. Yeah, oh, it's an interesting one. And again, you know, I mentioned my background before. So I was coming from an environment where I worked at a really big firm who were very focused on efficiencies and process and had all in-house technology. Yeah. Uh, and effectively, it was one big database that the technologists just plugged GUIs in. I think they're called apps now, aren't they? I'm not a technologist, but, you know, so we as traders, we'd go to them and say, we need this analysis or we need this tool to do our jobs. And within a couple of days, we'd effectively get it. Um, so I came from that environment to an environment where in the advisory space, I just literally, I, I just, it baffled me. I just, I was like, well, where's, there's got to be this system that brings everything together, right? Where I can, where I input my information in one place and then I can push it to the different tools that I want to use. So, you know, I started with just a, a bit of disbelief, I think, in terms of the technology that was available. Um, so it was quite disparate and I don't think we used it very well effectively. Um, and that's the technology that's been used since 2003, because I think you were in Telephone, weren't you? And then Focus, is that right? Is that, what was your journey from you know, uh, when you first joined to where you've ended up? And, and what were the challenges you were facing? Yeah, so we, when I first joined, we were with IO, uh, who on the face of it, everything was there that we needed. But at the same time, it was... Again, that wasn't interacting with the cash flow that we used or the risk profiling system that we used. So we just had multiple entry points. We also realized as well that we were probably relatively small to what they were used to. So making changes or using the full extent of what they had to offer was really difficult for us. So effectively, we weren't getting value for what we were, we were paying for. We just used the really basic tool of recording client information. Um, we made the decision to move then to Focus, Focus Solutions, and now Advise, which was on the back of one of their salespeople at the time who has since moved on, but we knew locally as part of sort of the groups we were in. Um, and to be honest, that was a really, really challenging time. Um, they wanted to enter into the small advisory market, but weren't prepared for it. And their focus was very much on bigger firms, bigger entities. So we very much from the, the tools look great, you know, and it was a step above intelligent office. But at the same time, when we said simple things like, oh, could we change this, right? The, the big bugbear from, for Sue, the practice manager, was she wanted to sort her tasks by date order. Yeah, uh, they were sorted on focus by who, which task was touched last. So it was an order of who'd interacted with a task, not when it was due. And so over the sort of three years that we had focus, that was a piece of technology that couldn't be implemented for us. Um, and again, there was no personal contact. So there was no help desk that you could call. Um, nothing basically got changed the whole time. So it was just a very, it's very difficult because it, I'm sure it was difficult for them in some respects too, because they'd entered into something that they didn't want to. Yes. And we'd 
put a lot of money into entering in something that just wasn't working for us and it wasn't going to adapt, right? So even though on the face of it, it did what we wanted, right? It stored our client data, it allowed us to enter tasks and we had a client portal. But if we wanted to make those things better for us, we couldn't. I think that's always the challenge, isn't it? Especially if you've got a vision for the uh, for the future, the direction of travel, and you have something perhaps isn't as agile or uh, you know, able to, to accommodate um, your needs. And that's always a challenge, actually, from a technology perspective. Um, you know, that journey is, even for us, a, a challenge, as I'm sure um, you, know, you can appreciate. So, so you started looking again, you ended up with Curo. Okay, so that was, the, uh, that was the consequence of your technology review. And how was that? How's that journey been for you so far? Yeah, it's been great. And I should say, I mean, one of the things that we did differently this time, again, because back in the day it was Diane's firm, a lot of the decisions were made by Diane at the end of the day. And she'd experienced a lot of things from different companies through time that had said, oh, that's not so good. So she had, I guess, a lot of biases against certain firms. So we didn't look at firms when we chose Focus because of something that had happened in the past. To evolve and not have that situation this time, what I wanted to do and what we did as a team is we set uh, basically our support crew or part of it, we created a working group out of part of the team, remembering we're only seven people, but it was we set three people on the support team and part of power planning to go and choose the next system for us rather than myself and Sue, the practice manager, saying, yes, we want to interview these people because we think one of those is the right one. They scanned the market and took different steps to narrow down the search before presenting to the rest of the team and together we voted and ended up choosing Curo. So it was quite quite a good way of getting in there. And I think the key to that is the whole team was supporting the journey before we even got started, yes. rather than just feeling like, you know, something that they're going to use every day, more than I do, let's be honest. Um, something they're going to use every day is something that they decided to use. Well, I think that's absolutely critical, isn't it? You know, you've got to have your people on side because it involves them every day. And if they find it too painful, they'll just disconnect and you know, disengage from the process. So having them make the decision together, you know, with a clear vision as to reasons why is, I, I absolutely agree, it's the way to go, isn't it? So, so look, changing back office systems is a hell of a challenging task. We all know this. People put it off for as long as possible because, of course, you know, change is always uh, difficult. Um, and, uh, I mean, how have you found that journey with uh, Type Advice and, and, and obviously how we've supported you on that journey so far? Yeah, look, it's been great. And I'm not just saying that because I've been here again. We've experienced the other side of that, how that journey can work and how it's, it is a challenging thing to do. Uh, you're working with two back offices. You're hoping that you get data out of one of them. And even for a small firm like us, there's a lot of data. You guys are working with trying to understand what form that data comes in so you can move it across. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, the team uh, at Curo and Time for Advice were great in that. And I think that was the real difference that was a bit of a sigh of relief, certainly for for myself, was that I could hear the murmurings of like, you know, oh yeah, we've spoken to someone and they've said that they're going to do this for us. And remember, you've got this training in the background and you can earn points by doing training, right? So everyone was motivated to go into those sessions and learn about the system. And there was a constant dialogue. Whereas the last time we went through it, it was, we paid our money and then hoped for the best and didn't really have any interaction. Um, the training's been great, yeah. And, you know, we're in, you know, it took obviously a period of time um, and apologize to you guys really, because I know some of the data as it was coming across proved more difficult than I think your team was expecting. Uh, but yeah, we're in and it, and, it, and it works. And I think again, it's, and we've spoken about this before, is it's taking baby steps, isn't it? It's those building blocks. So we're using probably a relatively simple part of the system at the moment so we can get the hang of it before moving on to more complicated stuff. Yeah, and I think you're spot on. I mean, there's a journey, isn't there? And that journey will never actually stop. It'll continually evolve as you become more familiar with what the art of the possible is. I mean, you know, uh, this might be putting you on the spot a little bit, but in terms of your goal, what, what does the end game look like? What is that destination for you when it comes to the use of technology? In an ideal world, how would that play out? I kind of want to go back to where I was eight years ago. 
<laughs> yeah, I sort of, I had, a, I had a sneaking suspicion you might say that. Which is a strange thing to say, but, and I don't think it ever will, right? I'm realistic. I, we're, we're, Ashley is a small, a small team, a small firm. We have to outsource technology and therefore we, we're in a pool of people that have their own, you know, have ideas about what the right way to go forward is. So I'm realistic with that. You know, the key for me is sort of efficiency and how we can use you know, back office system, CRM, whatever we're going to call it. But that really it's connectivity between the different tools that we use, whether that's cash flow or uh, risk profiling, you know, building portfolios and the information that comes back from that to run reports for clients. Uh, and we're starting to see that, you know, at this sort of little inklings of how that might work for us. But we might make, have to make some tough decisions on other providers that we use if they're not willing to link in with Curo. I mean, that's one thing that we're already starting to assess. But for me, I want a tool that the team can use efficiently. They're not wasting time inputting in multiple locations. I want a tool that not only records data and tells us what tasks are coming up, but can be smarter about our interactions with clients and can sort of ping us when they're saying, well, you know what, you haven't, there's been no interaction with this client for three months. Why is that? And by the way, the last time you spoke to them, you talked about this. Shouldn't you be going and sort of re-engaging that conversation? So being a bit smarter about how we interact with clients as well, I think would be almost the Nirvana case, isn't it? But, and, and that's entirely possible, obviously, Cure is a, a CRM system. And it's yeah. just, I think, understanding just how you can put all those components together to deliver the information you need when you need it. Yeah. And you're spot on in terms of the single truth. I mean, the industry is an incredibly frustrating industry, actually, at the moment, yeah. largely because, you know, it's primarily very small businesses uh, serviced by relatively small businesses. Yeah. And, you know, entrepreneurial businesses, of course, uh, you know, have to make their profit in order, and, and that obviously influences their direction of travel. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, from what it's worth, um, you know, we've been around the block a long time, my business partner and I, and the team that we work with, great team, we, as I say, often a number of the, the key members of the team have been with us for 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. ever since we started uh, providing technology to, uh, to clients. But the vision for the business moving forward is absolutely around creating the best product we can in Curo, mm -hmm. um, provide the best support, because I think that is a differentiator. The, you know, the feedback we're getting from people we speak to is support from the incumbents is pretty non-existent. Um, and total transparency in terms of how we engage with clients so everybody knows where they are. Um, and ultimately it's about achieving a simple objective of having the happiest clients because then you guys will become our sales and marketing team. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want ever to be concerned about sending a client or prospect to speak to one of our clients, you know, to get uh, an appropriate response, you know, and I think that's uh, really important as far as I'm concerned is uh, making sure best product best support, happiest clients. If we can achieve that, then I think we're going to do all right. So so finally, and thank you for your time today. It's, it's been really great. But what would your advice be to any firm looking to change their back office system? What, what's your advice, having gone through that process now oh, three times? Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I would say it's uh, don't believe the sales pitch is number one, right? Because there's great salespeople out there and just, you know, to listen, but don't fully, you know, just take your time to assess it. Uh, and again, I think what was key this time, the key differentiator was just one, taking our time, but two, allowing the people that are going to use it to drive the decision making, not the people at the top who, you know, in reality, aren't going to be using the product as much. So, you know, I think those are the steps. Also, you know, for us, it was really quite, you know, it was useful, let's say, that most of our clients are on the Transact Grab platform. So obviously your connection with them helped me sort of think, well, actually that connectivity that I'm looking for, that's more likely to happen if those two providers are together. Um, so, but yeah, I think it's take your time, trust in your team to, to help you make that decision. Nick, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate you coming up today and spending some time with us and giving a bit of uh, background to, uh, to your business and obviously your journey. I really appreciate the, the candid nature of the conversation. Yeah. And uh, as always, you know, if there's anything you need from me, there's always the telephone, so pick up the phone. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks a lot. Brilliant, cheers.